Hello, I'm Haley Aaron, the Registrar at the Alabama Department of Archives and History. Today, I am honored to share the story of the Harrelson Family Bible. For members of the Harrelson family, this family Bible was a symbol of privilege, piety, and pride. The family's patriarch, William Browning Harrelson, moved to Lowndes County in 1830. By the time he purchased this family Bible 20 years later, Harrelson had established a successful plantation, a large family, and a vibrant local church. Like most family Bibles printed in the 1850s, the Harrelson family Bible featured pages to record the births, deaths, and marriages of family members. Placing a name on the pages of the Bible indicated a sense of community and belonging. That's why it is remarkable that in addition to recording the names of white family members, the Harrelson family also documented the births of 73 enslaved men and women born on the plantation. The names of enslaved men and women are rarely recorded in historical documents, and when they appear, they are often listed on financial records and in bills of sale and wills. These records emphasize the reality that enslaved people were considered property and the sale of an individual meant the forced separation of mothers, fathers, and children. And yet, their names appear here. But while it is exceptional that white members of the Harrelson family recorded the names and birth dates of the enslaved men and women who were born on the plantation, their inclusion did not indicate equality. While the names appear side by side in the Bible in orderly rows of black and white, slavery created an unequal divide that influences how that information in the Bible was written and how we share the story of slavery in Alabama today. So let's compare the stories of two women who are mentioned in this Bible that were born in the 1840s and talk about what that means about the Harrelson family and about how we understand slavery in Alabama. The record tells us that Emma Eliza Harrelson was born on September 12, 1845, to her parents William Browning Harrelson and Susan C. Gordon. It also tells us that Emma married Captain J.W. Hudson at 4 o'clock p.m. on Wednesday, July 25, 1866. Based on these two brief entries in the Bible, we know the exact date when Emma was born and married. We also know the names of her parents and husband, and other entries provide the names of her siblings. With this information, we can easily search other archival records for the names of her grandparents, children, nieces, and nephews. The Bible connects Emma to her family and her community in a clear and detailed way. In contrast, the Bible tells us very little about the life of Lucy, an enslaved woman born on the plantation. The record tells us only that Lucy was born in January 1844. Using the Bible alone, we are unable to identify her parents or siblings. We have no idea of when or if she was married or if she had children of her own. We don't even know her birthday. Unlike Emma, Lucy's inclusion in the Bible tells us nothing about who she loved or how she was connected to the members of her community. It only tells us that she was born into slavery on the Harrelson Plantation. Other primary sources can tell us more about Lucy's life, but the search will require some educated guesses that are not required when we're researching Emma's life. We rely on primary sources like the Harrelson Family Bible to understand the history of Alabama communities that we call home. But primary sources are never complete and rarely impartial. The Harrelson Family Bible provides a remarkable starting point for learning more about the lives of enslaved men and women in Lowndes County. However, the silences that appear in the Bible tell us something essential about power and the construction of the historical narrative and sometimes leave us with more questions than answers. Mm -hmm.